Yeah, my name is uh, Bill Lieber from Westler Engineering, uh, 3131 Babette Drive, Southport, Indiana. And uh, yeah, I just want to give a, a progress update on our, our project for you. So, uh, a little bit about myself and Westler, if you don't know us. Um, Again, my name is Bill Lieber. I'm the, the head of the stormwater group at Westler Engineering uh, and vice president. I've been with Westler for 23 years. Um, and uh, Westler, we're water resources engineers, um, primarily in Indiana. We also do some work in Ohio. Um, we have a, an office over in Hobart. Um, but uh, that's all we do is, is water, drinking water, wastewater, stormwater. Uh, this evening, I want to kind of just kind of go over what the objective of, of our project is, what our schedule is, um, share with you the progress we've made on the GIS interactive map, and um, the hydraulic model that Dan alluded to. So what we're trying to do is um, gain a thorough understanding of the Beaver Dam ditch watershed, both its hydrology. Um, meaning you know, the runoff in that watershed, you know, where, wa where the water comes from, where it goes, um, and uh, the ditch hydraulics. Um, after studying that, we, will, we are preparing uh, a hydrologic and hydraulic model. So again, modeling both the, the runoff and, um, and the hydraulics of the channel itself and, and its tributaries. Um, identify and prioritize areas of concern. These are both uh, areas of concern that were um, given to us by shareholders, stakeholders. We've had communications and, and, and talks with uh, Lake County, Crown Point, um, but then also areas of concern that, um, you know, that, that we uncover through our investigations and through our modeling. Um, then through the preparation of that model, We'll be able to analyze future improvements. Um, and then we can summarize these findings in a report and um, present the commission with an interactive map that um, can help in decision makings and also just uh, show the, the findings and uh, summaries. So the schedule, uh, we started this process back in June. Uh, it's when the, the contract was signed. We kind of had kickoff meetings with uh, Dan and Anthony and, and went over the project goals and you know what the, the big uh, priorities are. And as, as Dan said, it was stressed to us that um, the commission really needs to have a way um, to understand what projects are going to be the, uh, the most beneficial to the watershed. You know, so as, as you're looking to, to fund um, Help you have some tools, namely this this model, uh, that will allow you to decide. You know what is what is the best project, what uh, makes the best impact on the watershed. In September, we had those meetings with the county, with Crown Point, um, and then we began our our data collection. Uh, Crown Point, uh, well, actually, both the county and and the city of Crown Point were very receptive and uh, were able to give us some of their previous reports, um, mapping. I mean, we have locations of all the, the stormwater outfalls that, that go into the Beaver Dam ditch. Um, and then we were collecting data from uh, the state as well. Uh, and DNR houses a number of models uh, of the Beaver Dam ditch and the tributaries. Um, so we <clears throat> inventory those models and uh, we looked at them for, for complete uh, completeness. Um, so then going through that, we were trying to find um, you know, the holes, the, the missing areas, you know, which portions of the ditch and the tributaries um, weren't previously modeled. Um, and, and through that, you know, we started our, our field investigations. Now, I was hoping to come today and say we were complete with field investigations. Uh, the, the weather's been uh, a little bit uncooperative, so we still have some field investigation to do um, and some data collection. Um, but we're, we're completing that data collection and using it to um, complete uh, a 
comprehensive model. So we take the data from all these different disparate um, flood models, project models, and we bring them together into one comprehensive model. Um, we have started on the, the interactive map. And I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about it in a moment. Um, but going forward, um, we, we should have the, the initial model done at the end of this month. And we'll be spending um, next month, uh, May, doing the calibration. Um, and then through that calibration uh, in the beginning of June, uh, looking at the um, areas of concern. Um, and then I'll be back in June to make another presentation of our findings. Might have to change my share and switch over to a web browser. Let's try to expand share screen. Okay. So um, we're building this, this interactive map in um, ArcGIS Online, um, and, and we'll have this available to you afterwards. Again, uh, we're taking data from different sources, including um, our own field investigations, and you know, we're going to be able to um, populate this map. Um, you'll have different layers that can be turned on and off if you need to see um, the flood zones. Where the structures are. Exactly. And, and not only where the structures are, but you'll be able to link uh, pictures of the structures uh, to it. Uh, we can link uh, video. Um, actually, the, the county has provided us with um, some of the footage that they've already collected. So you, <clears throat> you can click through on that and, and you'll be able to see um, you know, actual drone footage of, uh, of the channel. So it's, a, it's kind of a nice way to- It looks like hard pitch. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Same canopy. <laughs> So, you know, whether it's um, you know, video images um, or uh, results from the model, you know, we can, we'll be able to color code portions of the channel if um, whether it's erosion or flooding or, you know, high velocities, um, things like that. So is there enough water there, Bill, for you to be able to get somebody out of the water, like in a canoe? Or is this all just computer tech? The well, the, the modeling is all I understand computer, that, but um, the data collection I think we're mostly going to be on the, on, on the ground on the shore, you know, alongside taking the pictures, taking the, the measurements. Um, so you're going to get like depth and kind of where the water is supposed to go. I mean, the community should have some of that on the premise and the, the whole thought process. <laughs> with this particular project was to get a cumulative or a holistic uh, overview of that entire watershed. So as these new construction comes up, the impact would happen because all the water that we're talking about, it'd be nice to see that, you know, uh, aerial again, all that water when it's done, um, you know, working through this particular part of the county goes under I-65 and eventually ends up in downtown Hobart. So this is part of our overall goal of trying to connect all of these different portions of watershed. So one impact in one community doesn't have an adverse effect on other communities. So we have to have some understanding, you know, it's always been for me personally, what's and how all much water is going in under I-65 at that one juncture. And all that's happening, you know, west of there is construction. And, you know, the old stuff isn't getting moved. So we're trying to get ahead of things that we're seeing in Hard Ditch, where the volume is so much now after all the development, you have sheer walls in people's backyards. Right. And that's that's why it was really important to us to this comprehensive model is both uh, hydrologic and hydraulic. What uh, 
what you've kind of seen in the past, and you know, if you're the, the DNR, the, the flood models, those are hydraulic models. Those are giving you flood stages based on um, you know, a, a point in time and a certain flow. Okay. Can you explain the difference between hydrologic and hydraulic for us mere mortals who aren't water resource <laughs> engineers? So we are also, so hydraulic is basically just looking at the channel capacity. And if it's basically um, at a set flow, what uh, what's the elevation you know, in, in a channel? And then and usually that's what you use you know, when there's construction and say, well, hey, if we impact the, the, the channel and we, and we work inside of the, the floodplain, um, you're making the, the cross, you're changing the cross section. So does that adjust the elevation? Um, and that's very important. The difference between what we're doing is we're not just looking at the geometry of the, of the, of the, of the section and not just the channel, but also the amount of runoff. So we can look at, you know, how does it look? We make no changes to the channel, but now there's a new subdivision. And there's new parking lots, or conversely, if we put in a detention pond, does that make things better? Um, and and that's what becomes really interesting is, especially when you have multiple ponds in multiple locations, sometimes they work against each other. And sometimes you know each development you know puts in their pond and it's like, hey, we're, we're holding it back, but now they're all holding it back at the same time, and you end up with you know prolonged periods of uh, increased flow. So that's so that's kind of the, the difference. We're, we're also looking at that flow component. So and how the flow changes with, with developments. So, um, so that's what we're working on right now. We've uh, got the, the data, the, the, the cross sections, all the, uh, the channel data from those HECRAS models, from those flood models. Uh, you know, adding to that with their own field investigation, uh, doing error correction. You know, some of it, some of those models are old and you know, things have changed uh, since they were first put together. And then we're updating that physical data. Um, and then again, updating the hydrology. That's, that's the big thing is, you know, there's been land use changes. So uh, the amount of runoff is, is different. Are you getting the support from the municipalities that are along the Beaver Dam ditch as far as you know information that you need from you know their departments? Yeah, like I said, um, Crown Point and uh, Lake County in particular have been, been very helpful. Excellent. So uh, is that it? So yeah, that's um, all right. Any questions for Bill as it relates to what he's working on as far as getting this done? And tell me again when we're going to have the final and you're going to be able to tell us exactly kind of big picture challenges, benefits, areas of concern. I'll be back in June. Outstanding. I have hey. a question. Yes, sir. A couple actually. Um, one, just uh, well, first of all, thank you for the work. Appreciate you guys, you and your team. Um, so, random question is anything? Surprising? Have you found anything surprising so far, um, or unusual? No, noteworthy. Um, no, and, and I really probably should have brought Robert up, my my primary modeler. He might have some more um, interesting things, but um, it's a it's it's a, it's a big challenge. It's, it's really interesting. Just it's it's such a large watershed, mm -hmm. and it's in all these different. Um, Tributaries, hmm. so um, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If there's one, one thing or uh, that, that pops out, but uh, okay, yeah. fair yeah. enough. Second question <laughs> is um, uh, getting a little too. What was the second question? Um, oh yeah. So to uh, Mr. Chairman's point, how do we use the data? How will we use the data? I mean, I think I get the concept. I know I get the concept. Um, when you were clicking on the one page there, and I think it was just, it was, it was returning slowly, but the uh, floodplain areas, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. X and A, the different flood zone areas were starting to populate. So this information will become the, the model of record such that city of Crown Point, Lake County, state of Indiana will have access to this information 
And are they required to use this information when they're planning developments? Well, or is that part I, mean, of I mean, the commission will be the owner of the, of the model. Okay. Right? Um, and so, so I guess it'd be up to you to allow others to use it or to say, hey, you know, we want to <laughs> check your project against our model. So, right. so we can. We can figure that but out. I thought there was some, it can definitely be available to the state, right? Because I know when we started this project, you were saying we can go to the state, but to your point, right? Some yeah, of those we, get, we, get the, we get the information from them. They are also working on a new um, flood model for the area, but again, that would be just that hydraulic. Okay, model. not hydraulic. Okay, I, no other questions. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Anyone? Going twice. Thank you very much.